اوكي السلام عليكم مع تحياتي للجميع معي اليوم ضيف متميز هو مينستر ارجي سيجرسون وزير الزراعه والري من حكومه البرتا هاي مينستر سيجرسون ثانك يو فوري ماتش فور يور تايم اند جوينين اس هير توداي Absolutely, Sam. It's great to be here. Thanks for the invite to be able to talk about our uh, recent changes to the Meat Inspection Act. Actually, we I, we all aware of these uh, uh, massive fines that you your government want to want to uh, uh, impose on all these illegal sales or slaughter of the the meat. So, would you please give us a little bit uh, quick uh, uh, quick information about the, the the major changes that was addressed last yesterday? Yeah, thank you, Sam. It, uh, I, I first want to say that the proposed changes of under the Meat Inspection Act that we've put uh, to the Assembly um, are in a response to some uh, concerning trends that we've seen. But I also want to open by stating uh, we have so many great uh, legal operations that are happening in the province. Uh, they do great, great work to make sure that Albertans have access to a safe protein source. Um, so I want to make sure that it's clear that when it, these changes are not meant to affect those that are operating legally within the province of Alberta and abiding to the very high quality and safety standards um, that we hold dear here in the province. Of course, as you can imagine, Sam, we want to make sure that Albertans know and have confidence that the food they're buying is safe. These changes are directed to illegal operations. And what we've seen over the past uh, couple of years is the um, amount of reports that are coming into my meat inspectors is on the rise. Uh, we looked at the uh, both the fines and the limitation period or the time in which we can do investigation didn't align with other jurisdictions in Canada and also didn't reflect what we thought was the severity of some of the infractions that were taking place. To be clear, these are individuals um, that are processing meat in a very unsafe manner, and we have to make sure that the fines um, and are, are fit, fit you know, what they're doing. So before it was $10,000, we increased it to $100,000 per offense. And to be able to allow our inspectors time to do an appropriate investigation, we increased the limitation period from one year uh, in which an offense occurred to two years from which an offense is brought to the notification of my inspectors. That'll allow them time to be able to properly investigate um, any organization or individuals that they feel is creating an unsafe condition. Oh, I see. Uh, this uh, period, uh, two years, Is it from the time that the, the, the violation reported or from the time the violation took place? Well, right now, it, um, of course, uh, is a year from when the offense took place. The changes we're putting, uh, proposing through the Meat Inspection Amendment Act 2024 is that they our inspectors would have two years to investigate from the time in which an offense is brought to their attention. Oh, I see. And this fine, the ten, tenfold increase in the fine, uh, was it because of the severity of the uh, of the uh, of these activities, or just to be in line with the other provinces in in the country? Well, I think you know a combination of both, um, but it definitely brings us aligned with other provinces. Um, we've seen some of the uh, operations that are being investigated are growing in scope and scale. Um, so, of course, as you can imagine, uh, $10,000 was not much of a deterrent for some of these uh, larger operations that are um, that have been brought to our attention. We wanted to make sure that uh, we put in a stiff enough fine to be able to deter this type of activity because food safety is top of mind for this government. Like I said, uh, we always are working to make sure that we have um, the highest protections possible to make sure that Albertans are confident that the food they're buying is safe. Oh, I see. Uh, Minister, uh, as you know, the landscape of Alberta, uh, or no, I should say Canada, is really changing. And here, I think you can feel it here in Alberta as well. I mean, everybody want to move to Alberta. And, and that, is, that says so much about our province. But also with the new changes in landscape, a lot of people coming in from whether from nationally or internationally to Alberta, this bring, in my opinion, a, a different kind of need for the protein source or the meat you mentioned. 
uh, I don't want to. I don't. I really would like also to to uh, put the uh, the method of slaughtering the animals. It might be uh, different or or unaccept unaccepted unac by by the way we do things in here. My point is, these new blood that coming into our our province that required, a, uh, I would say, uh, a more uh, a broaden uh, understanding of the meat supply chains. So, by by the law, we all we all uh, we're all under the law. No, no doubt about this. But these these violations, in my opinion, reflect some needs that's already there, but it's not addressed in terms of the government or the in terms of the inspections meet. Uh, I just want to highlight one issue: uh, need for meat, need for meat. It's really related to some uh, celebrations of, let's say, for example, a Muslim community uh, worldwide. So when that need is just has to be supplied in one day, two days, three days, uh, a lot of people just go and just to buy the meat. I would say no matter how big is your source uh, or uh, are, uh, there's going to be some uh, some uh, exceptions. I don't want to say exception, but from the rules, but exception for the how to supply the meat. In your opinion, these violations, where the, is it related to uh, not enough uh, infrastructure to 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 supply uh, to provide uh, protein for these uh, new communities, or just as strictly was it driven by greed? Well, you know, from uh, you have to understand that when I take a look at this, um, what was brought to my attention was just the uh, incidents uh, and the increase. Um, you know, we saw in 2022, uh, 11 investigations, 2023, 29. This year so far, we have 55. Right. Um, I would say some of this relates to food affordability. People are looking for a cheaper source of protein. And uh, I would say that when it comes to our capacity, we have enough safe uh, protein sources. We have enough legal abattoirs. We have enough offsos that are available for Albertans. Uh, these are all licensed under our government for people to go to. And that is where we're, we want to make sure that people understand that there is that availability. And even when it comes to cultural, whether it be halal or kosher, we have many offso opportunities and many local abattoirs that operate uh, under the high strict uh, standards of the government to make sure that the uh, protein source, the meat that people are buying, is safe. Um, I would say that a lot of this becomes a um, economic opportunity um, for certain organizations to think that they can uh, illegally um, slaughter animals and be able to market that for 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 less. And that's where there's, uh, I think we're seeing a bit of the uh, increase in offenses right now. And we're seeing a bit of a more organized movement in this area. And that's why we're seeing the increase in numbers. That's why we're increasing the fines. We've also added an additional inspector to our team to be able to get out there and do investigations. Like I said, we wanna make sure that everybody has uh, easy access to safe and affordable meat. And we have to make sure that we continue to protect that. And, and that's why we're adding an inspector and increasing the fines and the limitation period. Um, I just want to be clear in saying uh, there is a list of legal abattoirs and offsos on alberta.ca. So if individuals are looking for safe sources, legal sources to be able to procure, uh, even for cultural events, I would advise that they go to the website and take a look at all of our licensed abattoirs and offsos. Um, that gives them a direct, a uh, little bit more direct confidence that uh, where they're buying from is is a legal licensed um, producer or processor. Sorry. Okay. What, okay. Well, thanks, uh, Minister. Uh, one of the uh, one one of the uh, pride moments of uh, government of Alberta is uh, cutting the red tape. And they, I mean, think you've done a great job in, in, in that regard. Uh, I spoke to one of these people who got affected by by the the uh, the uh, I don't want to say the strict, but these uh, new changes, or they're going to be affected. And he applied for the licenses and all this stuff. And I was told by this person, it's it's very complicated for like six months or so. He's still waiting for his uh, uh, things to get uh, through. My question is: Do you think the 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 process to get certified 
and there's like a slaughterhouse or a farmer, uh, a farmer to slaughter uh, animals. Is the process is it that complicated, or you think there is, uh, uh, or you think there is like new, uh, also new uh, rules and regulations might be needed to open a door for uh, 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 more uh, uh, businessmen to jump in? And because obviously, if there's a market. If there's a market, if there's a profit, people are just going to jump uh, into it. So uh, do you think the, the process is a little bit still on a, a blue tape instead of red tape? Well, you know, this, uh, the OFSO or On Farm Slaughter Operations Program that was initiated uh, by our government a few years ago is a program that we've seen uh, um, a lot of interest in. Um, and we see a lot of value in that too as well. Uh, of course, we continually review these programs and uh, take a look at uh, ways that we can continue to assist individuals to ease that process and understanding of that process. I've talked uh, to my department to make sure that they are putting the best uh, education materials forward for those that are looking into this as an opportunity to make sure that first of all, they understand the requirements, but also uh, making sure my staff understands that they're all, they should be aiding individuals to be able to navigate the process so that we, um, so that it's easier for individuals that are applying. Of course, it can always get better. And that's why we continue to review the programs on an ongoing basis to try to find avenues uh, to make it more of a predictable, um, easy to understand process. Wonderful. Uh, you mentioned uh, a profit-driven operation as a, as a reason number one for this illegal slaughter and, and uh, uh, sales of meat. I just want to uh, bring to your attention uh, a very important uh, point to this uh, uh, matter, which is with almost 10% of uh, Albertans, uh, uh, whether are Muslims or, or, or belong to a faith that, that really uh, have a certain uh, rules when it comes to their uh, consuming uh, meat. I can assure you, as far as I know from a lot of people, cost of the meat it's not as a number one priority for a lot of those uh, faith followers as much as the source of the meat how the animal was slaughtered uh, the, the process the methods and all the stuff so in that terms uh, as you know alberta government is already addressing the need to have some kind of halal financing which is that's a really a great uh, great things for the government at least to talk about and address what's the chances if any to have uh, uh, some rules related to the halal slaughter, and and, and number two is is there any uh, justification for that kind of changes within the law of Alberta? Well, I, what I would say is, of course, the offso program uh, was a direct response to a lot of Albertans that were looking to be able to purchase. Uh, direct from farm and have a closer connection to the protein source and deal directly with a farmer and be able to slaughter that and be able to take it home for their family consumption. Of course, that is meant solely for direct peer-to-peer -peer transactions so that individuals can procure their uh, protein source directly. The also program, um, of course, opens up um, additional opportunities for, for farmers to be able to market uh, direct in what we call kind of a farm to table aspect. Um, when we talk about the cultural aspect, of course, the programs uh, that we have uh, that are licensed, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for individuals to pro, uh, procure either halal or kosher uh, slaughtered. Um, and we look at every opportunity to work with um, all of our processors here to make sure that they have the ability to grow and scope and scale to supply the demand that they uh, see. This legislation under the Meat Inspection Amendment Act um, really is, is directed only at uh, one group, those that are not abiding by the law. And I want to be clear on that. This is not directed at anything other than those that are not complying and are not getting licensed through the government. This is not meant to restrict halal. This is not meant to restrict kosher. This is to make sure that those that are uh, legally abiding by the rules and regulations in Alberta uh, uh, are protected and that those that are not abiding by the law understand that uh, there's going to be strict fines in place because uh, out of any 
out of everything that I do as Minister of Ag uh, Agriculture and Irrigation, the most important thing that I need to do is that I ensure that every Albertan has access to safe, um, high quality protein and meat in the province of Alberta and all agricultural products are safe for consumption. Per okay, uh, Minister, I wanna use the time that you're here with me to ask a question completely unrelated to the, to the uh, amendment. It's related to agriculture. You're the Minister of Agriculture here in Alberta and I know a lot of newcomers, uh, really they came from agricultural background. But for some reason, I just don't know why here in Alberta we're not able, or we, so far we don't see the a successful sign of uh, of uh, our government or our province able to attract these newcomers to be uh, to be a source of future farmers. So, and I see the disconnections between newcomers and and the farming industries and, and agricultures, even though most of them. Uh, especially the, the the refugees and all stuff, they came from from agricultural background. So why Alberta government uh, specifically, with this massive land, not able to yet to 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 create to to close the, to have some kind of a, a connect like a, a, an easy tra uh, transition between you're coming here and also you right into the uh, uh, farmland industry. Sam, I, I you know I got to. This is a challenge and actually it's something the Premier of Alberta has put in my mandate to uh, try to find a way to create a better environment for people to become farmers. Uh, we've just made changes on uh, for new and youth farmers to have uh, better access to financing through our AFSC uh, lending programs because we're trying to improve that environment and close that gap. But Sam, you point out an issue that I think is is across the board. It's 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 more. It's not just a cultural issue. We see um, generational farmers here in the province of Alberta, kids that have grown up in rural Alberta, um, that are unable to be able to bridge the the capital gap, the money gap, to be able to take over even their parents' farms. And we see youth farmers struggling to be able to get into farming because of the cost of land, because of the cost of equipment. And really that's become a struggle. That's why the average age of a farmer in Alberta now is uh, 57 years old. And that number continues to go up. So when I look at this challenge, Sam, I work with, um, you know, I'm open to working with every cultural group and I'm willing to work with generational farmers, youth farmers, a lot in post-secondary. And you address something that I think is a province-wide challenge. It really isn't just focused on, on newcomers. It, it is a challenge that we're seeing for all youth in, in the province is, is a big challenge for them to be able to get the capital necessary uh, to be able to move into farming. And we're seeing a revitalization in the interest for those that want to get into farming but of course as you can imagine sam the average uh, price of land has enormously gone up in the province of alberta and the price of equipment uh has has increased substantially so this is a challenge that our government is focused on and we do, are working to uh, look at every opportunity and avenue possible to create a pathway for anybody that wants to get into farming to be able to have the access to capital to be able to do so and be successful in that venture. I really like what you what you said to me earlier is that people think food comes from Safeway. They completely forgot about John and Bob and Muhammad and Mandeep, those farmers who work day and night with their families to produce uh, uh, this food and meat and, and milk and all that stuff for us. I think really this is where we need to start is to bring more awareness as where the really food is coming from so we have more appreciate a better appreciation to our farming industries and also we attract those uh, new generations to not to go back to them but at least to appreciate the process and respect the rules as well instead of just thinking about it it's just i'm going to safeway grab off the shelf and here you go and and that is uh we talk about agricultural literacy and it's very important and understanding of where uh, people get their food uh, from and how it is uh, both manufactured and produced in our province. Uh, that's why our government recently funded a, a group called uh, Ag for Life. And Ag for Life is actually going into classrooms to work with teachers and students to be able to raise awareness about agricultural literacy and also um, 
have conversations about the opportunities that are available in the space of agriculture, which is something I think uh, I, you know, we're going to continue to do as a government is make sure that uh, all individuals in the province, whether they're newcomers or they've been here for generations, understand that there are vast opportunities in agriculture. There's high paying jobs in agriculture and, and that um, we want to make sure that we're creating that environment as a province so that those that want to get into farming have a clear, predictable path um, and that they're going to be successful uh, when they do become or find those jobs in the industry. So far, is there any programs or, or uh, like to uh, subsidize or to help for somebody who just want to start brand new? Let's say I want to rent the land and make it a big farm, but I don't have that capital to start. Is there any programs in the go like or grant from government to an individual, not a companies, not like a organization? Well, our uh, agricultural finance financial services corporation, or what I refer to as AFSC for short. Uh, has uh, lending programs available for those that are looking to get into farming. Uh, that is our direct government pathway uh, for individuals to come sit down and look and have uh, an opportunity to have conversations with individuals uh, when they put the business plan in front of them. Uh, AFSC looks at uh, you know looks at what their proposition is, of course, and then tries to find them a pathway to access the capital they need to start up in farming. Wonderful, Minister Sigurdsson. I really appreciate your time. I just want to uh, ask you the same question I think you already answered, but it's because it's such an important point, and then we'll end this uh, uh, interview. Uh, this changes the disamendment. As soon as I uh, like people start to hear about it, uh, there's some kind of like rumors. This is really uh, uh, like, oh, here you go. Now it's going to be harder for us to, to obtain uh, our halal meat, and it's going to be so complicated. We have to wait in line. It's not about waiting for the line. It's just like, you know, I, I want I need to get the meat at a certain time because there is a, a, a faith celebration. There's an Eid celebration. So the meat has to be delivered, let's say, on Monday because of otherwise there's no need for that. With these new regulations and new uh, or toughen the, the rules as well, uh, 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 fee, I'm not saying to break the law, but I'm saying make it harder for uh, people to obtain uh, halal meat. Uh, so I start to hear like, oh, here you go. It's in a way, it's just like trying to make it harder on us, us as a minorities. I just want to hear it again from you. These changes has nothing to do with any specific group or with this any any political stuff. It's just health and and well being of of the of the the people of Alberta. Yeah, Sam, thank you for the opportunity because I want to clear the air on this one and I want to make sure that all of our newcomers, all of our cultural groups, this has nothing to do um, with anything related to halal or kosher slaughter in our province. This is about uh, legal operations that are not abiding by the law and creating an unsafe condition for Albertans full stop. We want to make sure that Albertans have full confidence that the meat that they're getting is safe for consumption. As our government, we want to ensure that happens. We have many programs available for individuals to access through on-farm slaughter operations or abattoirs in the province. All of our licensed operators um, are listed through alberta.ca. If individuals in the cultural groups are looking for those that specifically slaughter related to halal or kosher, they can go to alberta.ca to get a list of, of providers that are licensed in the province. And that way they have the confidence that they're getting the safest meat possible, meat that is safe for consumption, um, something that we know as a government, we have to continue to protect. It's critically important. Wonderful. Uh, Minister uh, Sigerson, I really appreciate uh, your time. And I do have to remind our uh, uh, viewers that we're, we're having with us today, Minister RJ Sigerson, the Minister of the Agriculture and Irrigation here in Alberta. And we do appreciate your time. And uh, if there's any uh, need to any clarification, I think we can contact your office directly if we have a need for another chance to meet with you. Absolutely. Anytime, Sam. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much, Minister.